Hi, Rahel. Well, while companies like to talk about diversity and inclusion, the numbers are still pretty weak, especially for black women. Currently, the average black woman earns seven, or the average woman earns 79 cents for every dollar earned by a white man. For black women, the pay gap is even greater. They make 62 cents for every dollar earned by white men on average. What about company leadership? It starts at the board level. And we decided to take a look. Black women account for 3% of board directors at the top 200 S&P 500 companies, according to leadership consultant Spencer Stewart. Over the last five years, representation has only improved one percentage point. We took two industries as a sample, banks and technology. And here's what we found. J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo each have a black woman on their boards. Bank of America and Goldman Sachs do not. However, both B of A and Goldman do have very diverse boards, we should note. As far as technology, Facebook has two black women on its board, notably. Apple and Microsoft have zero each. Looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average for another sampling, companies in, in the Dow have black women hold 16 of the 345 board seats, according to our reporting and fact set data. Coke, Chevron, and United Healthcare, those are actually notable standouts with two female black board directors each. Many companies, though, from Walgreens to Travelers to McDonald's, have none. Now, there is reason for optimism. Since the George Floyd protests and corporate America's diversity, diversity pledges, boards are very interested in adding black men and women, according to executive search firms that we talked to. Board-level diversity is so key. As Ariel Investment CEO John Rogers, who is himself on the board of Nike and McDonald's, has said, board the board is the real boss. Directors can hold management accountable to live up to closing the gap on equal pay and hiring during this moment of change. Make sure they are held accountable for these promises that they are making right now in this environment. Rahel. Sarah, it's a really good story, and it's a very um, interesting story in light of everything that's happening. And uh, to put a fine point on what you've already reported, that it's even worse in certain states, right? State by state, it could vary. Uh, I've seen some reporting that in Louisiana, for example, the wage gap between white men and black women working full time expands to as much as 48 cents for every dollar. So my question is, um, it's really interesting to see the, the board changes that are happening. But, you know, that will take time to sort of trickle down for workers. I mean, what recourse do you have? Does there need to be more transparency as far as what you're making versus your colleague? I mean, what should you do to sort of stand up for yourself? I think there is a big push to have more transparency, to have companies, and, and a few of them do. Citigroup, for instance, has put out numbers on diversity showing the breakdown by, you know, d diversity and what people make so that they can be held more accountable. Also, and, and the reason we keep coming back to the boards, because they're in charge, they not just can hold companies accountable, they can actually put CEOs in this place. There are zero female black CEOs in the S&P 500, Rahel. Only three black CEOs. All three of them are men. And in fact, in history, there's only been two in the history of the S&P 500, two black women CEOs. So that, that's why I really say it starts with the top and then it can trickle down. Uh, but clearly it has to happen on every single level of the, of the employment process. Definitely. The numbers or the lack thereof really speak volumes here. Thanks for bringing us this story today. Really appreciate that.